Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Napalm Kenny here, and today we're going to be unboxing and reviewing the Surface Laptop Go. As you guys can see, I have several different colors here. All of them are the i5 8 gig 128, and I've got ice blue, I've got sandstone, I don't have the platinum, but if you have seen platinum before, if you haven't, that is just the standard silver color that Surfaces have been always known for. This is a Surface Pro 5, just for reference. So, a lot of people have had a lot of questions about what the Surface Laptop Go is intended for, and I would say it's definitely, they're targeting a lot of education customers, so um, education decision makers, uh, principals, administration, superintendents, but also if we were to look on the commercial side, also for business customers. People who are just on the go, not necessarily looking for something like Surface Pro X that would need um, LTE consistently, someone who would just need Wi-Fi, who has access to Wi-Fi, and travels around, or maybe they actually remote work. They work from home and they just need to work from the living room, work from the kitchen, wherever, and they just want something that's light with a lot of battery life, about 13.5. And that's if you're watching like your standard YouTube videos, and if you're having the general recommended amount of battery um, performance. Now, if you actually want to extend the battery, you can actually put it to a battery saver. And then that would make it a lot more, um, give you maybe about two hours. But you, that would turn down the brightness. And if you turn it, the brightness all the way down and get rid of a lot of background apps, then that's when you actually get those two hours. But, so let's go ahead and start. I have the Surface Laptop Go here. Um, a lot of people got confused about the name. Is it a laptop? Is it a Go? I don't know. It's just a baby laptop. So what I have, I don't have the 4 gig 64 gigabyte, um, version so we're not going to be talking about those configurations and we won't talk about the 256 because it's basically just the same thing as this but with a lot more storage with double the storage these are the i5 there's um it's going to be a 10th generation processor with eight gigabytes of ram and then the solid state drives are actually um for the middle and the highest tier so for the 128 gigs and 256 gigs there'll be solid state drives and then on the 64 gigabyte one, it's going to be EMMC. So those are the um, enclosed or embedded multimedia cards. Hopefully I got that right. <laughs> I always get them mixed up with memory cards. So basically, that's how I think of them, They're like little embedded memory cards. And, and they're quite slow. They're much slower than solid state drives, which is why they get a lot of like crap when it comes to people not wanting them. But, you know, it is what it is. I think for $549.99, it's actually a pretty great price point. And a lot of people will wonder, well, why the hell would I buy this? It's $549.99 and I'm only getting i5. I'm getting an eight gig, no, getting four gigs of RAM and getting 64 gigabytes of storage. That's not even solid state drive. What would that computer even be for? I would say it's for someone who um, definitely does a lot of web browsing, does emails, does uh, watches YouTube and watches Netflix video and, you know, does like your basic computing. Anyone from K through 12, nothing, no, definitely no video editing, no graphic design, none of that stuff. But like I said, very basic. Um, and it doesn't mean that it's not, um, doesn't allow you to run multimedia and stuff. You can watch videos, you can do a lot of things on there. It's just that you're gonna be doing basic everyday tasks. This is a very great everyday computer. Um, and for that, to get back to the main question for consumers, this is for someone who is a parent who's looking to get their child their first Surface, you know, and they don't want, and maybe their child doesn't need a Surface Go. Like they've grown, they've, they've, they've grown beyond a Surface Go, which is very much a kickstand, basically this with a kickstand and it's much smaller. It's got a just over 10 inch screen. And then it's honestly, the bezel's a little quite thick on the Surface Go. So for someone who just wants a traditional clamshell, they want something nice, compact with great productivity and great performance and great value for the most part 549 starting at that and if you add your student discount on the microsoft.com store that's actually pretty great i think it's microsoft.com yeah but other than that um i decided to get the i5 8 gig 128 and i'll tell you a bit a little bit about the basics of what i bought these for i purchased these more so for doing the basic things that I talked about. Um, I noticed that now that I work from home, a lot of things, I use my work computer, but other than that, since I'm home all the time, I'm either on my TV or my Xbox, or I'm, you know, just playing video games and doing all that stuff. But I noticed I really don't 
need my computer to do that much anymore. I have a gaming rig that I built myself. Um, I use that one for video editing. I have ThinkPads that I can use for on-the-go video editing. So I'm looking for something that's small, compact, and I have heard of the X1 Nano. So that might, might be coming soon. Um, I, I told myself I would not be spending any more money, but who knows. So yeah, so I got these because the battery life is great. They look really nice. I like the new color scheme of this ice blue right here. And then also, um, you know, the fact that that didn't have backlit keys, it, it didn't really bother me because, you know, I'm at home, you know, generally lighting is okay. And, and honestly, I'm trying to get some sleep in, so I'm not really staying up so late, you know, and trying to type stuff anymore. I'll do all of my aggressive typing on my ThinkPad. But yeah, I wanted something that had the same, let me move this duo out of the way, that had the same uh, performance, the same amazing design of a surface, you know, but I didn't want to pay that much. And plus, Jackson is, you know, nine years old now and he's looking for a new computer. And I was like, let's, why not let's just upgrade, okay? We have a Surface laptop too for him. And some people might think that's a downgrade, but I don't think so. But anyways, so basically that's like my little thoughts about the Surface Laptop Go and why I went this route. So emails, going on the internet, <laughs> because I like to shop, obviously. So if you guys have seen my other videos of like shoes and everything and bags. And um, mostly if I were to need to travel and do some light and do some work on here, you can definitely do that. Most of the time I'm opening and closing documents, Excel spreadsheets, and then everything I do is basically me remoting in to another server. So it doesn't really matter. As long as I have internet, this is just perfect for me. And plus I have everything on um, Western Digital My Cloud, I have that, and I also have, um, what else do I have? I have OneDrive. I have everything on OneDrive, so 128 gigabytes of storage didn't really matter to me because I'm not putting Photoshop on here, I'm not putting Premiere Pro or InDesign or anything, it actually takes up too much space. Neither am I going to be able, this doesn't even have the performance or capabilities to play a AAA game, so I'm not even going to be doing that, so I don't have to worry about the updates and, then the, you know, like all the gigabytes being taken. That's, that's not an issue for me with, with the storage. But anyways, enough of me talking. It's been like how many minutes? Seven minutes? Let's go ahead and start opening up this thing right here. Surface Laptop Go Ice Blue comes with Windows 10 Home, but in S mode. S mode being safe, secure, and kind of like a very much closed, enclosed ecosystem. So what does that mean? Kind of like, um, be honest, kind of like your iPad. <laughs> not the same, like, not in the same like way that this is a, like this is a computer because this is not, this is just an iPad, it's a tablet. But you know how like an iOS, like for the iPad, you can only download stuff um, unless you like do something totally extra, but most of the time you're downloading everything from the actual app store. So Windows 10 Home, in like Windows 10 Home in the S mode is where you can only download apps that are restricted to the Microsoft Store app that's inside your computer. Now, if you want to download Chrome or some something extra or like um, that's not in the app store, the Microsoft store app, <laughs> I don't know, store app, then you'd have to switch it out. All you have to do is actually go into the start menu and type in S mode and it allows you to switch out from the S mode to just regular non S mode. But remember, once you do that, there's no going back, unfortunately. Anyways, so we've got this. And this is just how the box looks like. As you can see, the seals open. We opened this one earlier. This is actually Jackson's that we're placing the Surface Laptop 2 with. And then this is an extra one, and this one is mine. As you can see, I've waited all day to make this freaking video, so it's time. <laughs> Anyways, so when you first get it, it's sealed in plastic as they usually are. You wanna be careful not to actually drop this box because it really hurts. It's happened before, and these are very sharp corners. In the past, you used to have to like take a scissors and kind of run it through here or box cutter and then you would work, like ruin your box. But now there's actually, they got smart, okay? There's a little tab here and all you gotta do is just lift it and pull. And then it gives you a really nice opening to actually, you know, shred open this box. And that's what exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna take off this plastic right here. It smells good. It smells just like a surface. Anyways, so Surface Laptop Go i5 8 gig 1, 128. Opening it up, as soon as you open up, this is the standard lid 
Honestly, I always thought that the way to design the boxes are just really nice. I, I've seen so many iterations, I've had so many surfaces, but this one looks really good. Okay, this is the Surface Laptop Go, obviously, and then you also have a little pull tab here. So the amazing thing is once you pull it open, um, you're gonna find some hidden compartments. These are times and conditions that people never read. And then down here is your Surface Charger. Your Surface Charger, before they used to have these crazy looking tabs where you couldn't actually open it. And, um, and if you were trying to open it and you try to put the charger back in, it would take you forever. Now you just open it, smell the fresh charger, smell, and there's actually another tab. They, they just got smart with these tabs. Open up a tab and then here you go, here's your charger right there. Let's toss that out. And the charger, I believe, is actually a 39 watt. Don't know if you can see that, but it's a 39 watt charger now. Surfaces, honestly, I mean, I'm not, I think with the new processes and all, they just really don't need that much. And plus this is ultra fast charging. I believe it's 80% in under an hour. But honestly, I've seen surface chargers everywhere from 127 or something, 127 watts. Um, I don't know, it's 100-ish watts, more than 100, 190 something, 65, 44, 22, all over the place, 44. Like I know the Surface Laptop 2s came with uh, 24, 44s, and, which was honestly, I think it was just a little strange. I personally like the 65. 65 watt is my fave. But, and then I also noticed that in the new chargers, which I'm a little peeved about just looking at now, the new chargers do not have this extra USB, uh, this USB-A here, because back then if you just needed to charge something and you didn't want to plug it to your computer or you didn't have the outlet, the brick for it, you can actually plug it right here and then it can charge like your phone or um, something else, you know. And just a, you know, reminder when it comes to surface, uh, bricks power supplies make sure you actually plug this all the way in sometimes people really don't do that and they just it's like kind of halfway in like oh it doesn't work it doesn't charge i'm like no you got to really jam it in there okay same surface connect magnetic um, charge you'll see it stick on there later and then you'll also the surface connect port allows you to also use surface dock one and two with it uh, let's see what else we're doing. Sorry, I get sidetracked. All right, so many surfaces get lost. So here we are, we're gonna go ahead and open this. And from what I know, as soon as you actually open this thing, oh, there's, um, I see fingerprints on here. I kind of don't like that. I'm like, I thought it was supposed to be new. Okay, so we've opened it. And as soon as you open it, it starts turning, it turns on right away, which is actually pretty cool. But considering coronavirus and everything, we're gonna go ahead and spray this down with alcohol and wipe it down with a microfiber cloth. This is actually the recommended way to clean. This is made out of um, aluminum and not like the older stuff would be um, magnesium alloy. This has aluminum in it, which is perfectly fine. Your, some of your, most of your MacBooks are made out of aluminum. I, don't, I know some people were talking about it. I don't see how that is an issue. And then we're just going to clean this up a bit. Because I see dust. I have this thing. I wear glasses. So if I see dust and random stuff on there, I have to go clean it. And I'm going to turn the brightness up. Hopefully they let me do that. I hate that FN key. So this is how you actually set it up. You know, you go through Cortana. She talks to you. It's very noisy, annoying. So we're actually not going to do that. I already have one that's set up. So... This one is set up right here, and you got your same lock screen and everything, but after you set up, it looks just like this. Sorry, you might see my ring light. But yeah, I actually, this one is still in S mode, and then this one is not in S mode anymore because we had to download Minecraft Dungeons, go figure. But other than that, um, and I'll tell you this, it actually, you know, the whole commercial where they show you playing Minecraft and everything, you cannot actually download Minecraft or Minecraft Dungeons on here unless you take it out of S mode, which was kind of sad. But yeah, so this is it. And then I will also turn on the camera to show you what the camera looks like. Oops. That's what the camera looks like. So you might see ring light inception, but um, that's it. The video quality, it's okay. It's 720p and you know, like there, there are different levels to 720p. It depends on the different megabytes. I don't remember, but I'll put it right down there so you guys can see it. 
because I just don't remember those things. But anyways, so the keyboard, this is the same, I feel like I wanna drop it. This is the same surface quality that you're used to seeing. It's got this pixel sense display here, really small bezels, and it's actually curved, not just on the actual hardware, but like right in here like where the screen is, it's, kind of, it's got a curved display, which is really nice, like grounded corners. I don't know why people are getting so onto that, like, but I'm fine with whatever. You've got your fingerprint sensor right over here. And then let me see if, well, I don't, let me see if I can show you guys. Okay, so when you are actually, when you turn on this computer and because it doesn't have backlit keys, the only thing you're gonna be able to see are the um, the FN key and the fingerprint, the power slash fingerprint sensor. So when you're actually trying to set this up, um, don't know if I can perform this, you're going to go just look up on, on the Cortana search bar, look up in settings fingerprint sensor or fingerprint sign in a Windows hello and you'll see it. And then you're just going to take your finger and you're just going to keep tapping on there. But this is actually smart. It actually noticed that it says your fingerprint's already set up. Try another finger. So I guess we'll just, I don't know. I don't know what world I would probably use my middle finger to Maybe I would if I'm cooking or something. I'm like, oh. Now that we've gone over the fingerprint sensor, we can go over other things. It's got your same plush key, uh, keyboard here. The key travel is actually pretty good. I tend to be a very aggressive and hard typer. Um, on a good day, probably typing about 80 words per minute. On a bad day, um, probably 50. Okay, so, and it also depends on the keyboard. Um, if I know if I need to type a lot of stuff, then I'll probably go on to my uh, desktop over here with my mechanical keyboard. But on the go, this is just fine. Is it a ThinkPad? Is it like a ThinkPad keyboard? That type of plush and quality? No, that stuff is like platinum gold standard. This is just a little bit underneath that level. But as far as typing, it's definitely very plush. You can hear the keys. It's got really great feedback, and I just keep saying plush because this is one of those words I like to use to describe keyboards. Um, really great feedback, and honestly, it's very quiet. I, I'm a very hard and loud typer, but this is actually quieter than uh, I'm used to, and, and it's a lot quieter than other things. So let me see. Opening up Word. Let's see. Do, 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 the quick brown fox what happened to the quick brown fox oh shoot i don't know brown cow i have no idea this is a test on how loud the keyboard is i can't type okay so that's basically it uh, i made some typos but oh well so that's how loud it can be um and that's just typing haphazardly lackadaisically and this is the same glass trackpad that you're used to. It's a precision trackpad. Like I said, it is glass on the top. So if you do drop something very heavy on it, it is going to shatter and you're going to be very sad. Okay. Let's talk about ports. So ports, what do we have here? Hopefully, I know it's auto focusing on my face, but hopefully you can see this, but I'm gonna try to hide from it. What we have here is going to be a USB with by, by feeling, um, USB type A, USB C, non Thunderbolt, just in case you're wondering, 3.5 millimeter jack, Surface Connect uh, port right over here. Other than that, there's really not much to it. The top has the Microsoft logo, it is aluminum, okay? Down um, underneath, so like inside, also aluminum, glass, precision trackpad plastic, which is the usual surface. I don't think they ever made them. It's all keyboard, generally plastic. Aluminum, and up till you get right here, this is plastic. In here, right? So this hinge in Surface laptops, let me see if I can find a Surface laptop. In a Surface laptop, we usually have, I might be proven wrong, but, uh, oh shit, totally proven wrong. But there's a hidden hinge. The hidden hinge down here is actually metal, but this has an exposed hinge and it's plastic. And this is not like that nasty plastic that people think about. That's kind of like, a, like this plastic. It's not that type of plastic. This plastic is the soft touch plastic, kind of like when you have a, you're in your car and you've got the hard parts 
plastic parts, but then where your armrest is, it has that nice soft, soft touch plastic. This is what that is. So as you can, you can actually hear it in here. And then it actually helps that it's not as hollow because there are actually things inside. So it's actually, it's soft touch. And if you are still wondering what the hell would it actually feel like, if you have ever touched a arc mouse um, or any of the new surface accessories or that rubbery eraser grip um, at the top of a surface pen, this is it, okay? So this one's blue and I don't know if you can see some of the fingerprints. I don't really leave too much, but, and I tried to clean it off, but I have some things over here that have kind of stuck, but we can see if it'll come out. <laughs> so yeah, probably makeup from earlier, to be honest. So yeah, oops, I don't need one cloth. Yeah, I came right out, it's no problem. And then also, we don't have feet anymore. As you can see, surfaces, laptops and laptop threes have feet, little tiny pebble feet. This, this one does not have any feet. It just has two, um, rows like so you've got this little rubbery you got this rubber piece of rubber going all the way throughout from left to right throughout the device and then you also have this going throughout the width of the device too very interesting stuff so they made away with the feet but the interesting thing that, that i've noticed about the surface laptop threes this is laptop two but on the threes you they're actually serviceable so what would happen is you would take these little um they're not spudgets, but they're like these little, they're really pointy. And then you kind of stick them underneath and you take off all these feet. And then they would have screws underneath and you'd be able to open up the back piece of the Surface laptop and you would be able to service it. And that's basically it. I wonder if this can be serviceable. And my guess is probably no, unfortunately. <laughs> so, and the other main things is that you just have your general Microsoft, you have your serial number, and then you also have the model number. Yeah, model number is 1943. So it'll tell you if you ever look up and if you forget like what surface you have, you can always go online, type in 1943, 18 or whatever, and then you'll find out exactly what you had. And if not, you can always check your warranty by putting in the serial number um, in you know, onto like the surface.com website and you can check your warranty that way too. And this comes with a one year manufacturer warranty, just like all the surfaces. Uh, you can purchase extra two, three, four years of what they call complete and complete covers accidental too. But for this, this is just manufactured, so it covers dead pixels. Um, if your hard drive fail, if you have hard drive failure, something dies on you, keyboard totally pops out for no reason, it's not your fault, then you can definitely send this back. You just gotta go to um, the Microsoft.com website and get it swapped out. And then definitely don't forget to register this because, well, honestly, if you sign in with your your Microsoft account, like the reason why I didn't, I wasn't gonna show you guys how to set it up because it's very tedious and it takes a lot of updates. That'll be for another time, I guess, in the future. And there's actually a new thing I wanna tell you guys, there's no way for you to set up this computer without a Microsoft account. So if you're someone who likes to set it up with um, your local account, you are going to have to use a Microsoft account first, set it up that way, and then go inside of account from settings and then you'll have to like re, uh, you have to swap it out. You'll have to change it to a local user, a local account instead. Um, I had to do that with this other computer because it obviously wasn't working. But as, as you guys can see, this is the display. It looks really nice. Hope you guys can see it. Let's see, what do I think of the device? Personally, um, I've put this thing, I've had this for about, I don't know, a little bit longer than most people, but I've had this for a, a good amount of time, a couple of days, and I've been able to do everything like I said I needed to do on there. I've been able to put, you know, I put Outlook on there, did all my emails and stuff, um, or I could use the Mail app, which I absolutely hate. I like Outlook. I have way too many email accounts to be using Mail. So I use Outlook. Uh, Word has worked just fine. I've done a little bit of work on it, actually, uh, remote it into things, nothing wrong has happened, ran through all the updates, and honestly, I don't think the fan on here has ever actually kicked on. The only time it has kicked on, I will say, is when we installed Minecraft Dungeons, we took this out of S mode, and then we were running it, uh, running a video game on here. That's when I actually, I felt it. I didn't hear the fan, but I kind of felt it. It was like a little, it's like a vibration that kind of happens 
somewhere here, and then the heat, there's, I don't know if you can see the grill, but, uh, well, hopefully you can see it, but there's actually a grill that comes out where the, the heat and the fan comes out from here, so it's got to disperse somewhere, so it has to be here, and that's where I felt the heat coming off from when we were playing the video game. Like I said, this is not really meant for playing video games, but I can definitely show you, so. I have an Xbox controller here. It's probably one of so many that I have. Um, I think it should be connected via Bluetooth. If not, we can connect it real quick. Yep, it's connected. I don't know, can I play this while it's facing this way? No idea. And the speakers are pretty good too. You know, they're not amazingly loud, but they'll do. They'll do, pig. Okay, just want to make sure the brightness and everything is all the way up, but um, I think it most likely says press any button. Oh, I see the loading logo right here. <laughs> I'm like looking over at my viewfinder, and so we'll have it over here, and I will be playing <laughs> from the side so I can see it. Uh, I guess we'll keep this hero. Honestly, I always thought Minecraft Dungeons is such a spooky game for kids, but kids love it. I play with Jackson all the time, and he has no issue with it whatsoever. So now we have Minecraft Dungeons um, working so far, and the graphics are, they're okay. They're, they're not good looking. They're not like Xbox One X that we have. But, there we go. It's, it's kind of crunchy. It's like if you were playing The Sims, this is the uh, Sims on low quality. <laughs> I think I can do... I think we can do Squid Coast. No, that's a tutorial. Never mind. Hopefully my power is high enough. through this I can remember how to play I have seriously I go through so many games I haven't played in a couple days and I already forgotten how to play things honestly it's taking quite well I'm not having any issues I thought there would be a lot more lag I know it does tend to run hot but like honestly you would probably place this somewhere on a table before you start playing it, you know, you're not gonna have it in your lap. But if you do, I highly suggest you don't. Uh, where am I supposed to go? I have a dog here? Oh no, I'm not supposed to go here. Oh, I'm supposed to go over there, shit. I think I went the wrong way, guys, I'm so sorry. Oh, oh hell no. Come on, zombie. Jackson's on a much higher level, but I hate those baby zombies. Um, he's on a much higher level but because he had to start over um, on the PC. Doesn't recognize your progress on the Xbox for some reason, so. TNT, that means there's a horde coming. Dang it, I told you I'm not good at this. Alright, so we'll go ahead and pause it there. Actually, I forgot Minecraft doesn't pause it, he's probably done anyways. <laughs> so that was basically Minecraft Dungeons, um, so now you can know that you can play. You can do some light gaming here, like I said. Definitely nothing too serious, and what else can I show for you guys? I guess we can talk about size comparison. I just want to make this overall comprehensive. If I left anything out, please leave in the comments any suggestions or any questions that you have that I can definitely answer. So I have a myriad of devices here. I've always got Surface Laptop Go. Um, let's see what else I got. So I just want to show you the, the, the size because people ask how small is it and it's 12.4 inches which is the display is 12.4 the surface pro is 12.3 which is interesting because the surface um 
Laptop Go is smaller than the Surface Pro, as you can see, right? It's, it's this part of the Surface Pro that's a little bit longer than the Go. So you can tell how compact it is. Now, now if we were to compare between the Surface Laptop 2, and which is a 13.5 in display, we compare it to the size, the overall size and dimensions of these two devices with the Surface Laptop Go, then you'll see that the Surface Laptop Go is definitely much, much smaller than we had originally intended. So this is the size of the Surface Laptop 2 versus Surface Laptop Go in the front. As you can see, look at all this space. I think they really just learned how to maximize bezels, you know, make them really tiny so things are much better. If you have a ThinkPad, I have a ThinkPad. This is, this ThinkPads are like my baby, honestly. It's surfaces and ThinkPads, but if I had to choose between the two, um, honestly, leaning a little bit more towards this end. But I have an X1 Yoga here. It is 14 inches in screen size, but probably about 15, uh, over 15 when it comes to the actual physical dimension. But the funny thing is, you know, the looks like the ThinkPad is, the ThinkPad's actually thinner than the Surface Laptop Go. Isn't that crazy? This is an X1 Yoga. That's probably why. If you had a P-series, T-series, or something else, it might not be this thin. And, but that's what I've always wanted in an X1. I saw this, it was the first gen I saw it. I didn't care if it was $2,600. I saw a deal for Black Friday and bought it. I bought it 2016 and I've never looked back. So anyways, but this is the size comparison between these two. Now, uh, if you have a Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Yoga Gen 4, I have a Gen 4, which is much smaller than the Gen 1. As you can see here, I'm gonna show you in just a second. This is the Gen 4, Gen 1 in the back. Both X1 Yogas. And then we're about to compare them to the actual laptop though. And then after that, I think I might have like one more device that can have the, um, I have an iPad to show you. <laughs> and that's about it. But that's the thing, it's just, you know, this is a 14 inch um, display and then versus 12.4, but as far as physical dimensions go, totally different. Now, X1 Yoga still has the laptop go pretty much, it honestly has most computers pretty much beat when it comes to um, the, with, with the thickness. And I honestly think it has to attribute to really good design and also really, really good hinges. So yes. And as you can see the difference, honestly, I shouldn't be showing you, you guys this, but hey, it's an honest review, you know? But the reason why I love ThinkPad goes, <laughs> fuck, sorry. The reason why I love ThinkPads is because of all these different ports. You don't sacrifice on ports, okay? What you do sacrifice is that you get a burning hole in your wallet, okay? You know? So you may not get the HDMI, the uh, USB-C Thunderbolt. This actually has Thunderbolt and USB-C. You don't get the, the SIM card um, slot. You don't get the micro SD card slot, but that's okay. So like when I'm doing heavy duty stuff, I bring this with me. You know, I have different purposes with diff for different devices. This easy peasy stuff. Honestly, I'm gonna be very honest. So with this last thing, this is a, uh, I gonna say Surface. This is an iPad Pro 11 inch, and this is the first gen. Have second gen as well, but they, they're kind of basically the same, so there's no point showing both of them. And this is what the 11 inch looks like. It has an 11 inch display for the iPad um, Pro 11, what is it? 11 inch first gen, and then versus the 12.4 inch, plus all the, the little tiny bezels of the Surface Laptop go on the back. This is the only thing that's a little bit smaller than that. But honestly, when I was doing a lot of meetings and calls, I do a lot of conferencing. I was just joking to my coworkers. I probably, 50% uh, of my work week is taken up by meetings, <laughs> like online meetings. So all my meetings generally go here, it goes on my work device or my phone too. Where's my phone? Or my phone. I have a Samsung Galaxy Note 20 5G. And um, yeah, Ultra, I have the Ultra, I totally forgot about that. But anyways, so I'm not, if I'm not taking calls on there or on the iPad, but now that the iPad is like basically, I'm moving it out and using this. 
This is gonna be my everyday stuff. Cause usually I use the iPad for shopping. I use it for emails and stuff. And I use it for quickly for quick typing notes and, and everything, just getting stuff done. But I think that the Surface Laptop Go is gonna be the main thing that I stick with. Obviously you guys see that I have a lot of devices. Uh, these were all purchased by me. Um, yes, most of them. I think I, think I was given the iPad um, Pro because Pete had gotten the second one and he gave me this one. But like ThinkPads, I bought my cell phones, all surfaces and everything. So I seem to like to collect them too. And I give them all purposes and stuff. So the Surface Laptop 2, I'm going to be um, trading it in to get some money back and also the Surface Pro 5. So those, um, I swapped out for, for basically these two things. I swapped them out for two laptop goes. But yeah. Anyways, I think that's about it. It's been, I don't know how long, 30 something, 40 minutes, but, or maybe less. But if you guys have any questions, definitely let me know. And also, if you definitely need to clean stuff, use 70% iso, 70 isopo, uh, so if you guys need to clean stuff, use 70% isopropyl alcohol. I have it in this mister from if you if you guys um, have a wife or a girlfriend or a girl a friend who happens to be a girl they will tell you about this mac fix plus but what you need to do is when she is done with it and she's gonna recycle it just tell her no don't recycle it give this to me fill it up with isopropyl alcohol and it creates this the super fine mist and you know because the problem is if you try to pour alcohol and it lands into like your computer you're gonna basically mess it up so this you can actually spray it all you want with no issues go to o'reilly's or go to AutoZone, pet boys maybe maybe not pet boys but anywhere where's your automotive store and pick up like a 20 or 10 pack of these microfiber cloths because you can actually use these to clean um and it will take off all the fingerprints all the grease and grime every single thing pizza had i've eaten pizza on here and it will keep it nice and clean and disinfected and honestly like i said that's just a recommended recommended way to clean it now if it's just something like on the screen don't spray as superable alcohol on it just use the micro uh, fiber cloth to wipe the actual display but everything else you can spray it down it's totally fine do not pour it directly on there i've had people do that and it killed the computers but anyways so you guys have any questions let me know i hope this has been comprehensive um like I said, if you definitely, for most people, they're going to need the 8 gig 128. Um, if you're very, very basic, you know, K through 12, you can go for the, um, you know, that i5 4 gig 64. But I highly recommend going at least mid tier and up and using your student discount. Or if you're a parent, you can use the student discount. If you're an educator, use the student discount, get all the discounts. So thank you guys for watching my video. And I just hope that, you know, you guys, get to experience this one day. Definitely, if you get a chance to check out Laptop Go, please do. And other than that, I will see you guys next time. Bye.